What's up, Instagram? Um, Sarnan from Engrave It. Just uh, going to do a video of uh, Superior Wire Wheel uh, Hub. Uh, this hub actually just getting engraved on the actual hub face, um, not the whole fully engraved hub. Uh, I'm going to pan over to the hubs and I'm going to explain how we go about laying it out and engraving it from start to finish and how it looked before it goes to chrome. So, hope you guys enjoy. If anybody has any questions regarding the equipment I use, it's not going to be answered. That's why I have classes. Um, and more than happy to show everybody everything. If you take classes, that's not a problem. Some of you guys are, could already see uh, Cholo Glide on here. He took a class. Um, more than welcome to show everybody in classes. Um, it is an air-assisted engraver, um, but you'll be seeing my handpiece on there, obviously. Uh, my engraving vise, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, but you're going to see the whole layout from start to finish. Um, we have a couple of pieces already done uh, with no dots and one with dots filled, on, filled already in. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, we have, uh, oops, let me see. I'm not trying to, trying to flip this around here. I'm new guy, sorry. So uh, we have uh, George. Mm -hmm. He's going to be uh, filming me and taking care of this stuff while uh, I'm actually engraving. So... We have uh, some hubs here. So this is the blank hub. This is the way that uh, Angel from Superior Wire Wheel sends it. Good quality hub. All right. And you'll see that this one already has the engraving. With the, it's not, no filling, no dots. Okay. Um, then this one has already the dots. And it's already filled in. So this one will be ready to go to chrome. So... Um, I like that. Play hard. The 63, the hard way. Uh, I like what you said, man. Play the movie already. I'm going. I'm going. I'm getting there. So so this is what we're going to start with. I'm going to show the whole layout of uh, how we mark it up, divide it, just so you see. So if you look at this, it's divided in quadrants four ways. So this image and this image is a mirror image of each other. Does that make sense? And... Um, so pan off to that. What I'll do is I'll save the video so everybody could view it for 24 hours. I don't know if I can save it for, um, I don't know if I could save it for YouTube, but I really like to post this on YouTube. If not, I'll do something similar and post it up on the YouTube channel uh, using the GoPro or something. And uh, tell the boys I say hi, Val. Okay. I'm gonna pass it on to George now so we could, uh, kind of get going on this so, all right so I usually use like a compass with a marker attached to it and uh, we're gonna get this get this right here we're gonna get this back border and the the I call it the back border and the front border or the two borders just to kind of hold everything in and that gives you the space to do all the dots inside Okay, which actually makes it pop a lot more uh, versus the, the frost shading or the stempling, whatever you want to call it, or sh shading, frost, whatever you want to call it. it. I don't think it pops up as much as the dots personally, but that's just my opinion. So we'll start off by doing a little border. Okay. Okay, so now that we have that border, what I'll do next is I'll just get the regular black magic marker and I'll start usually, um, I've been doing this for 20 years so it's a little easier for me to do, it, do the math now, but usually these are divided a, a equally. So wherever you see the, the bottom one or the top one, it's divided equally across. So if I want to, I'm gonna come kind of guide that. I'm gonna make some little quadrants. So, and then you'll go here and here. 
So what that does, that you're dividing it in four pieces. So here, 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 and here. So then from that, you can make a nice little line there. And you could draw a straight line like that. Or you could do like I did over here, just little dots. Just as more of a guideline. This is not exactly what we're going to go off of, but I use them more as a guideline. Anything I draw, usually, it's a guideline. It's not actually something um, that I'm actually going to follow 100%. Uh, so then now I got the quadrants. So going back to the one that's done, we have what I call the major backbone. Okay, one, two, three. So you got one, two, three to the to the right, one, two, three to the left. And if you flip it around, then you have one, two, three, one, two, three, left, left and right, right, left, however you want to put it. Okay? And then so the way we're gonna divide that, you're gonna go back down here, and you could actually measure from here to here and do three equals, or you can go over here, you know, and start laying it out just off of these bottom holes so now there okay and i'll use these ones as the main point where the scroll splits and you guys will see when i start getting into that okay so do that now like i said i'm doing it this way because almost 20 years of doing this stuff or actually 20 years in 2019 it's been 20 years 16 years actually self-employed since january and you know, we'll divide that, um, and then we'll come back here and do the last one. So now you'll have, you'll actually have 12 equal spaces. So you have from, you'll start from here and you're going to split out to match how this is right here. You know, I mean, you could do it the way you want. Some people... I've done them before to where it's one continuous pattern, okay? Um, other times, I've actually done it to where the scroll work is actually facing the same direction. We've done it to where it starts on the bottom and ends on top. This one doesn't start, it starts on the bottom, per se, and it ends in the middle, and then it starts in the top and ends in back in the middle. So, um, you'll get you know, a good amount of that. So starting there, what you would normally do, you know, you could actually, uh, there's two ways to do this. I've seen some people use the method like I've done, and I just kind of like rough sketch it on there, okay, like that. Or you can do the dot factor. Okay, now... If it's your first time doing it or you're just kind of a beginner, you're going to realize that it, it's not as easy as it looks to just draw the scroll work. Uh, my scrolls are not perfect. Uh, they're far from that, that they're unique. At least I know mine's not a traditional scroll. Um, I try not to copy anything that's like Western or uh, English scroll or German scroll or whatnot. Um, there's all kinds of different types of scroll work and I... I highly admire it, but it's just not my my thing. So we can do that, um, and then you could also draw in everything. So what I do, I don't draw. I usually don't draw this part, the the inside scroll. Okay, um, I don't draw anything else. I just go to town on it, just from experience of doing it. So, and then you can then you could start as you're drawing it. You could kind of fix these uneven gaps. You know, to like, so it's a try to get it the best equal split as you can. So visually, it looks 100% proportion. Um, but this is pretty much what you would do. But so what I want to do is I want to do one like that. And then I want to come back here, and without this, we'll erase this, and I want to show you guys that you can actually do that, obviously, visually, 
Um, at first, it's very hard to do it. And I want to show you guys that you can actually do it. It's just your brain has to be kind of uh, pre-programmed already for it. It's very hard to explain sometimes how I could come up with and just do the scroll without actually drawing it. But, um, but you do have to, it, you don't have to, but it'd be preferred to at least do a breakup like this. So you could have at least the closest amount of equal spacing. Um, so the scroll work is not going to be exactly perfect, but it'll be pretty dang close all the way around. Um, so, and that's part of the true art of it. So, does anybody have any questions on there yet? Nothing yet. All right. So I'll put it here in my engraving vise. Yes, this is an engraving vise. That's what they sell them for. So, look up the air. If everybody hears the air compressor go off, I'm sorry, but that's just part of the gig. We have to have it to uh, run the air equipment. So what we're gonna put is a little bit of cutting oil. I like smearing it all on there. Some people smudge it. So. So we'll start off. This is a pneumatic air tool. It's made for engraving. I've had it for 20 years already. So we'll start off with a border and then work ourselves into the scroll work. Usually, the marker should not erase, but if it erases, you have to clean it all up and redo it. Unless if you could follow a broken up pattern. And this is what I talk about, no chicken scratch. It's like a real, not a really thin line. It's really deep or wide and it's continuous that's what makes the lines cleaner for when the product is actually chromed with a high quality triple plated show chrome so you could leave it like that but obviously it would cut you so we're going to cut it off all right so then we'll leave that little piece right there and then we'll start on that outside border. And these hubs are real hard steel. Obviously they're holding a bunch of cars that are heavy and um, they're very hard steel. And I see a lot of the hubs that are engraved and yeah, they're engraved, but they barely take off any material. Well, the reason being they take off material very little it's because it's a faster way to engrave uh, to pump out work faster and obviously then the customer is not getting what he actually paid for and I hate to say it but don't skim on your quality guys quality is everything um, it's not so much about the perfection it's about the better quality you're gonna provide to your your client your customer whatever you want to call them Try to see if uh try to see if this scroll keeps going. Sometimes it breaks. Sometimes you get this little beautiful little little curl there going. And if we can get that to go all the way around, that'd be awesome. usually do live videos um, I wish I had more time for stuff like that I'm gonna start trying this 2019 to make more uh, videos to post for everybody to check it out 
that way people could get a concept of uh, how hard this stuff is really and it's not something that you could just run a little production line and and sell garbage to people all right so that's the outside and that's the inside okay so now we're gonna do this the one that I semi drew on here and start go whoop yeah we do have slip ups the trick is to know how to cover them up all the engraving before it gets chrome plated I get it buffed out so if there's any little hairline scratches for the most part we could take it out um, on these hubs on these hubs it's kind of hard to like go around because of the inner wall so what I do is I just go half and half um, so we'll do that So we're gonna do all the backbone first. We're not gonna worry about the inside cut. So we're gonna take care of doing all this, all this outside perimeter first of the scroll work. Then we'll focus on getting everything else like the inside scrolls and then all the leaves and everything else around it. So now no drawing, just And again, this is an air assisted chisel or air engraver. Um, I don't use a Dremel to engrave. Uh, if you guys are looking for Dremel style engraving, go check out my boy Hank, uh, Hanro Studios. Uh, he does awesome work with the Dremel. We do use the Dremel to do the dots. All these little background dots, all the background, we do use a Dremel for that. Um, it's good equipment, it's just not my, my forte for actually hand engraving. Continue. All right, so that's that's about that's about half of uh, the hub with uh, the backbone. So you got one, two, three, and then one, two, three. The right, the left. So now we'll do the opposite side, and then we'll go back in there and fill in all the scroll work, and then add the leafing at the end. So this one we had it drawn, but the rest of it we'll just do without drawing it. Which is, there's nothing wrong with drawing it if, uh, if you know, that's, that's the way you, you, you have to do it. You do it like that. I mean, it's better be safe than sorry. Um, 
I'm just pretty confident in myself that to do it without drawing for the most part. Um, I like having a borderline. Most of the time, I like having a borderline drawn. Uh, your eyes will be deceiving if, if your lines are straight or not when you're doing a whole border. Uh, so you want to try to take advantage of that marker being there to guide you in the right direction. I got only one, one, two, three more to go. Three more scrolls, you know, to finish off the, the major backbone of it. So now we have the major backbone already ready and then we'll continue on to doing the actual inner scroll work to get these little guys in here all all these little guys we'll start with this one that's already drawn and then go from there Okay, so that one's done. We'll move forward over here. So now we'll start moving on to the right side of the lower part.
Okay. So did that. So now the lower part of the hub, the lower part of the face hub is already got all the inner scroll done, all the inner backbones. So now we'll do the top. And then you could start this one from here, there, wherever. It doesn't matter as long as you keep going. Okay, so now we got the two more. <laughs> cool. Now we have a the full hub already done with the backbone and kind of get you guys a better visual here. So that's that's the major backbone so I guess this would be part two of the hub so now we went from blank to border to backbone outer backbone inner backbone so now we'll start doing all the inner leaves outer leaves all the fill-in work pretty much okay let's see here So, give me a minute, guys. Just want to make sure. Mm. So, um, all right. So, we're going to continue on this now with a little bit of more cutting oil. If anybody's interested, we are doing, uh, this is the whole year schedule. I already posted on my Instagram. It's on my highlights and so forth for the class schedule for this year. We'll be doing an uh, introduction to engraving for car and motorcycle engraving. Then we do, in March, we're actually having the first advanced class, but you must take the introduction class. And then we'll have one in April, June, August, and November. If around... After June, there's more people interested. I might have a second advanced class for the year, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Okay, I'll go back to this here. Start off doing the main lead.
Okay. When I do that one, I usually like to do the opposite side and then jump, start jumping back and forth on different things. for the breakup points. Guys asking, what is that called that you're doing? This is a hand engraving for a superior wire wheel hub. It's the center part of the wheel. We have the compressor going on. That's kind of normal around here. Compressor kicks off. Hopefully pretty soon. We'll be stepping up and uh, buying a, a silent compressor to run the whole shop. This is an air assisted chisel, right? Correct. China engravers better than GRS ones? Definitely not. I do not recommend getting a China engraver at all. They're way cheap for a reason. And they will burn they will burn out they will burn out on you and they're not very powerful at all. Okay, so we did all these outside leaf patterns and connected these guys just so they have come to a point more or less but now we'll start doing the outer leaves of everything else
Now this is already a design that I made on three other hubs. So I already know exactly where my leaf should go and the positioning, etc. demonstration for uh, diamond cutting no no demonstration on diamond cutting but in our advanced class in March we will be showing people how to diamond cut but I will never put that on video at least myself So now we had all these outer leaves on the smaller scroll. We should have all that done. Do a quick glance to make sure we're good. And then we'll continue to do the inside cuts. So if you put this next to this, you'll see the design, it mirrors it, okay? And that's one of my pet peeves is at least mirror image your design or at least make it consistent on all four pieces or two, whatever meaning pieces you have, it should be a consistent design at least. It's never gonna be perfect, it is hand engraved. If you get it damn perfect, we good for you. Um, unfortunately, you know, it is still considered hand engraving. Guy wants to know how to sign up for your classes. Um, you can call us uh, to the shop, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., or you could actually Send us a DM and I'll give you all the information correct needed. The classes are $925 with a $125 deposit, non refundable. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, here's the dates. I have them posted in my highlights. And um, for February, I have four spots left for that class. And then, could you one day teach your art in Argentina? Um, it would be nice. It would have to be definitely. Something, I would have to uh, plan something with a few people to go out there and teach everybody at one time, or at least five or six students at one time. I mean, that's my home country, so that would be definitely awesome to do. All right, we're going to start going into the inner leaves now.
Lars say, says, uh, what's up? Lars? Lars. Lars. What's up, Lars? All the way from Sweden. When people, uh, when people say, oh, well, I can't make it to your class. I'm out of state. I tell them I had a student from Sweden that's a tattoo artist. And Lars, you the man. It shows when you really want something, you'll go get it. It doesn't matter what. So right now we have one, two, three scrolls. So we have the whole left side, lower left side of the hub pretty much done for, for the hand engraving part of it. And so now we'll continue here and then jump back on the opposite side. In Spanish, ¿qué tipo de máquina utilizas? Una máquina de aire asistida. Es asistida de aire. So obviously, you probably see in the video, when I get in the rhythm, I'll just start going. Um, that's 20 years it took me to do that, okay? So what I charge is not because of how quick or slow it takes, it's because the 20 years behind that it took to get to make it go that fast. Um, I think a lot of people don't get that, and it's kind of a little annoying sometimes that they expect a certain price a certain thing, uh, they don't realize that it takes time to be able to do something like this. Um, granted, I could teach probably somebody this in less than a year to be probably better than me. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case. The, the case is everybody wants the answer now and it takes 20 years to do this. I, when I first got my equipment 20 years ago, it took me a whole year for me to even be enough confidence in myself to provide the service for other people, uh, let alone I didn't have nobody to ask help for, for YouTube or any of that. Um, this is all self-taught. Then later on, once I had a name for myself, about five years later, I ran into other engravers such as Rudy Peña, uh, Torreira, uh, Jaime Castaneda, and a few other people along the way that came and uh, showed me little tricks here and there. Um, others. They wouldn't, they would block, um, they would hide a lot. And that's why I decided to do the engraving classes because um, I'm not gonna show on social media all the tricks of the trade, uh, but I will do more live demonstrations like this. I like doing live demos at shows to show people what it really takes to do stuff. And you know, you guys will see that this you know won't take probably an hour for the engraving and then um, to do the dots, you know, we'll probably got another half hour, 40 minutes right there, but it it's not that. It's, you pay for the quality for the 20 years. You're not paying for something that somebody got taught and now 
uh, they're just trying to kill the market and pricing and so forth. Um, you got to let the quality reflect for everything. Are you going to Arizona next month? Yes, I will be there. In Arizona, we should be doing live engraving along with the Las Vegas Super Show on September 1st as well. We'll probably be doing a few other events through the year. Um, I know the goal is to go to Taveras um, in Northern California in August. But that's my son's birthday, so I'm not 100% sure yet. Someone wants to know what does a starting kit cost? Um, average out the door, you're probably looking at like $2,500 to get it, to get you in the door correct. I mean, you could probably go for a little less, but you're going to be cutting corners a lot. I would recommend, you're, you're, the, what I would recommend to all my classes, to all the students of the classes, I recommend something that costs about $2,500. Okay, so now we're done with uh, about half of the design, and we'll we'll uh, keep moving forward to the rest. So hope as hope everybody's liking it at least, and keep moving forward on it.
They'll continue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now we got three quarters way done. All that's missing is three more main scrolls and we'll be done with this hub. And then it's off to get dotted and then chrome plated. going to be showing the process for the dock no we're not going to be showing that we're just going to be showing the main engraving and that's it So I'm gonna jump on here for a little bit. So we got one more, one more scroll to, to be done. So we just have this area now. We will not be showing the dots today. The dots is kind of messy to put on camera, to be honest. Uh, it gets a lot of dust everywhere. But thank you for asking. So now we only have this little guy to go and then this thing will look like that one and after we dot it it'll look like that one and then ready to go to chrome okay all right finish that up for you guys
All right, guys. I guess I'm getting a little signal here that says uh, it's about to be a wrap in the next minute. So uh, thank you guys for joining, whoever was watching and taking your time. I'll leave this up for 24 hours, and we could uh, post it. Hopefully I could download it so we could put it on YouTube and go from there. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, if you guys have any questions, send me a DM. If not, an email. Um, Cholo Glide, I know, I know I made it look way too easy, brother. But uh, definitely, um, this is how the start to finish was. Hope you guys could check out the beginning if you guys are just barely getting on. Um, and we will, uh, so no Chrome Brokers, uh, there's no master here, man. Um, I do make it easy, but that's like 20 years of uh, making it look easy. Anyway, the timer's saying, I guess I'm only allowed uh, so many minutes on live or something. But uh, everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching.